Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back. Today we're just doing a quick 10 minute tutorial. This is gonna be a fun one. Um, so as you can see here, I have cowrie. Um, I think that's how you say it. I don't. Uh, it could be cowrie, I don't know. Anyway, um, long story short, it's a GitHub. It is just an SSH honeypot. If you don't know what a honeypot is, just wait. We're gonna describe it, it's gonna be awesome. So first off, hit that like button, hit that sub button. We're so close. I wanna get to 5K subs this year, man. I really want to, that's my goal. Let's freaking make it happen, guys. So what is a honeypot? Pretty simple. Honeypot is a purposely vulnerable server sitting there waiting for someone to connect to it or try to do something on it. So that way you can log that. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, for a couple of reasons. One, I want to know who's attacking me, right? If this is sitting out there, they're going to go for this first because it's easy. So when that happens, I now know this person is trying to attack us. Let's either block them. Let's figure out what they're trying to do. Let's see what they're trying to accomplish. And then prepare for that. It's a way to be ready for an attack in a sense. So what is this one? This is a simple, simple SSH one. I looked at a bunch of honeypots. Okay. If you guys have never seen the, um, honeypot list, there's awesome list of honeypots. This is a well-known list for honeypots and you can see there's tons of them, right? I looked at a bunch of them. I didn't, I chose this one because of how easy it was. That's why I chose it. Okay. This is not the one that's like the best. Uh, there's millions of them out there, but this is one that is good. You can build your own. It's really easy to build your own. Um, the reason I didn't cover that is because it's much more complex than 10 minutes tutorial, but all it is, is you take a machine, make it vulnerable, add logging onto it, set it out there, right? That's the basic concept. It's pretty simple, but this one I like specifically for a couple reasons. Now, first off, the ease of use. So what I mean by that, we'll go ahead and click on it. You go down to the red, read me, and look at how easy this is. I'm not joking, so we're gonna log into my VM here. I have two VMs up. One of them is going to be my Cali Purple, and that's where it's gonna be running, okay? So you can see, if we pull this over here, we have it right here, Calorie, right? We're literally just gonna run this exact command, okay? So we're gonna say, I think I actually ran it pretty recently. Docker run. Now this port, you can change this port to whatever you want, but this is the port we're gonna run it on because you wanna make, honeypots are a finesse game. You wanna make it um, easy, but not so easy that when an attacker looks, they go, oh, that's that's not, that's a honeypot, right? If everything in your environment is super secure and then you have one thing that's just blaring, come get me, they're going to know what that is. So you want to make it, so they changed the SSH port to 2222. Um, I would still change it. I wouldn't keep it at the 2222 only because anyone that has used this will know that's the default port. So we hit enter and watch this. It's going to run. It's going to build it for me. It's doing everything for me. I didn't have to do anything. And you see what right there, it says ready to accept SSH connections. Okay. So we leave this running. We have this sitting. One thing you want to do with a um, honeypot, if you do ever use one, always, always, always run it in a DMZ. Do not put this in your real network because it gives them a way into your network. Okay. So don't put this in your real network. What I mean by that is have it gapped, have it. Um, I, there's people don't use DMZ anymore, that terminology, I guess, but I don't know the, the new terminology for it. I call it a DMZ. It's an air gapped, um, network basically. So you have your firewall, then you have this, and then you have another firewall, right? So it's, Anyway, make sure this is not sitting on your main network, okay? Ever, ever. So now it's running. It's ready to accept SSH connections. Now all we got to do, minimize this. We'll go to my other VM, my Kali Linux box. And we'll go ahead and bring that over here. Okay, and you can see here we are my Kali Linux box. And it doesn't really matter. We'll just go to there. Now all we're going to do is we're gonna say, hey, we wanna SSH, and it doesn't matter what you use. We're gonna use root, but it doesn't really matter. We're gonna say port 2222, and then we're gonna say, now keep in mind, when you do an in-map scan, this will pop up. So let's let's do that first, right? This is how an attacker would work. So in-map, now we're not gonna waste everyone's time. We're just gonna say port 2222, we wanna do that port, and we're gonna say version number, or version, we want to know what's running on that port. We're going to say 192.168.49.131. Hit enter. And look at that. It says right there, it's an SSH, open SSH Debian version. Okay, that's really good. Linux, Linux kernel. Why is this so important? Because it looks like a real SSH um, 
connection. That's what it looks like. Now, the reason I say, keep saying it looks like is this is not a real SSH. You're not actually SSHing into the box. So that's why I think this is so cool. So now we'll say SSH. So they would find this, right? We want to SSH as root. We'll say port 2222. We want to do root at, and here's the beauty of this thing. It doesn't matter what you do. No matter what I do, it's going to let me in. Now, it's going to ask for my password. It'll usually ask you if you want to authenticate the uh, certificate. You just say yes. The password, I can put whatever I want. Just a bunch of buttons. Enter. And I'm in. Now, some of you might say, well, that's too easy. They're going to know that that doesn't matter at this point, right? Because at this point, you've logged into my SSH server. So either A, you're going to think, okay, I got in. Perfect. Or B, this is going to let me know that you're trying. So either way, it's a win-win. Now you can adjust this a lot if you want to. Um, now you can see we're in a root at server, right? I can hit LS. There's nothing there. You can CD back in LS and it looks like a real server. I mean, this looks legit. It's not. These are just files. What I mean by that is this is not a real SSH server. This is not. So like, who am I? It says root. Those are commands that they put into this. You can read the documentation and they put that in there. This is not a real SSH server. It looks legit, but it's not. So now when I go back to my VM here, look at this. It's logging everything happening and it's logging this IP, which is the IP that's connecting to it, which is me, my Cali box. That's the IP. So it is logging all this and telling me who's doing it. So I don't have to do anything. I just sit back, wait. Here's the other beauty of honeypots, right? Anyone that is doing it legitimately, meaning at your company, whoever, would never connect to this because they have no use for it. It's, it's not a real server. So you know anyone connecting to it is 100% trying to attack you. So you don't have to guess, right? Now, the other nice thing is uh, the programs included with Debian do, 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 are described in the individual files, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So you can see it all looks legit. It's not. Here's the beauty of this, of this uh, program here. Number one, you saw how easy that was. That was it. I didn't install any dependencies. I didn't do anything. I downloaded it, ran this Docker command, boom, over. That was it. That's how easy it was. That's why I chose this one because it's so easy. Now, the other thing you can do with this is you can use Telnet. You have to enable it in the configurations, which is fine. But if you go to the documentation on this, so I know I, I saw the documentation somewhere right here. Read the docs and you go to documentation. Okay. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can add and remove your own files. So what is why is that important? Because let's say you want this to be a little bit more um, advanced of a honeypot. You can add confidential files in there with specific names. So let's say you're a you know you're a bank and banks store their files in this format with this name, and you want to see are they targeting me as a bank or are they just targeting you know anybody? Is it just a script kitty going boom? Let me in. And you can tell that very quickly because if someone's just going through all the files, they're probably not looking for something specific. But if someone goes straight to a file and pulls it, they are targeting. They are going, they know exactly what you do. They know what kind of files you hold and they're going for them, right? So um, a good example of that, Citrix had a vulnerability a couple years back um, where you could get a hold of a configuration file or you could get a hold of or get access to it by accessing a configuration file that was exposed basically um if you saw them go straight to that configuration file you know exactly what they're doing they're doing that vulnerability right so that is the same thing that's what's going on you can make files specifically with confidential information right and you can really kind of let them peruse and you can tell what they're doing very quickly based on that so um it's really cool really really easy i'll put the link in the description you can do all kinds of stuff with this. You can edit it. You can manipulate it. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can see, um, I don't have Telnet enabled, but you can put Telnet on. So that way it opens up. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of things you could do with this and with minimal configuration, you can change a lot of this. So it doesn't look as default so that if someone's aware of calorie, you don't have to worry about it. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. This is a quick 10 minutes. Hopefully you guys like honey pots. It's something that you're interested in. I recommend every um, organization has a, has at least one, um, maybe a network of some to kind of make it very uh, s s realistic. But this one, really cool, allows you to do a lot of cool stuff. So hop into it, have fun, and enjoy it. Thanks, guys. Hope you have a great day.